Before we start, just a quick heads up on what exactly we're going to be looking at today. First of all, I'm going to show you where to find your automations list and all of the data associated with the automations. Then I'm going to walk you through the automations library in OmniSend, which is pretty damn awesome, so make sure to stick for that. And finally, I'm going to show you every single feature of the automations builder so that you can start building your own workflows as soon as possible. So all of your automations can be found, quite self-evidently, on the automation page. Here you can see some of the key metrics to see how well your automation workflows are performing. And then you can click on any of your workflows to get into the editor in case you need to make any changes. Keep in mind that all of the contacts that are already in the workflow are still going to go through the old iteration of the workflow and the changes are only going to take place for the new contact. Finally, you can click view full report in the editor or alternatively, you can click view report on the automations page to see more statistics about your workflow's performance. Here you can see the general data on how well the workflow is performing overall. And you can also see data for each channel separately if you're marketing omni-channel, which you should be doing with OmniSend. As we all know, in e-commerce, data is key, so that's why we at OmniSend always make sure that you have the most in-depth data and that every single sale is attributed to the correct channel. Now let's return to the automations page and create our first workflow. By clicking New Workflow, you're going to be taken to the automations library. Now at first, this might look a bit intimidating, but once I explain how everything is laid out, which is going to take just a moment here, you're going to see that the automations library is actually very easy and intuitive to navigate. The top of the page is populated by our recommended workflows, which include some of the most essential as well as the most commonly used workflows, such as a welcome email or abandoned card sequence, as well as some more advanced workflows with engagement splits and A-B tests. And the left side of the page is where you have your filters, and that's how you can really easily find exactly what you need in the library. You can either filter by the type of workflow that you're looking for, be it a welcome sequence or a card abandonment sequence or a workflow for special occasions, or you can filter by the goal that you have for the workflow. For example, you can filter out the workflows that help you convert subscribers into buyers or build more loyalty for your brand or recover visitors after a browse or card abandonment. And finally, you can filter the workflows based on the channels that they use, which is quite self-explanatory. These pre-built automation workflows take just one click to pre-populate for you. And they have all the automation steps and also all the emails already set up for you so you don't have to build the workflow yourself or fill out any emails from scratch. And then you can make any adjustments that you want for a more personalized and branded feel. But keep in mind that these pre-built workflows have been thoughtfully put together by our team, including the most essential practices that every brand needs as well as the workflows that drive the most sales. Now, to demonstrate to you all of the features of the Automation Builder, we're going to go back to the Automation Library, and this time we're going to click Create Custom Workflow. This is what you do to start a workflow from scratch. And the first thing that you need to do is create an enter condition. For this demonstration, it's going to be an abandoned card sequence. Then you can also add additional filters to the trigger, as well as the audience. And then you need to pick an exit condition, which for many workflows is going to be order placed. A lot of workflows are aimed at getting your contacts to convert. And once they do convert, you do not want to keep sending them the communications from the workflow. And that's what this exit condition is for. And then finally, you can select a frequency at which contacts can get into the workflow. And in this case, we're going to make it so that it cannot trigger for customers more often than once a week. Because to keep our brand image subtle and professional, we do not want to overwhelm our customers with too many communications. The next thing that you want to do in a lot of workflows is add a tag. Audiences of customers tagged with something can later be used in more campaigns and automation workflows or for creating segments. And then another essential is a delay. Since your customers might leave the page to go watch a review or compare with another seller, you do not want to be annoying and send them abandoned cart reminders right away. So it's recommended to have at least a one hour delay for abandoned cart sequences. I'm going to go for 30 minutes, however, because the next step that I want to include is a push notification. Because there is a very high chance that my potential customers within 30 minutes after abandoning the cart are still going to be browsing. And I want to recapture their attention and get them back to my store. 
Here you can customize the title, text, and destination URL of your push notification, include an icon or an image. And then for your convenience, you can also send a test push notification that you're going to see in your browser right away. Then if the contact still doesn't make the purchase, I want to get back at them at a different time as well as using a different channel. So I'm going to add a 12 to 24 hour delay and send them a cart reminder email. You can see the key performance metrics under every communication inside of the workflow. So in case your workflow is underperforming, you can pinpoint exactly where the weak spot is and make adjustments. Here you can edit the key elements of the email, but you can also click edit content to open the Omnisend drag and drop email builder. Then you can modify the email. And then after you're done with all of your editing, you can just save and go back and it's going to take you right back to your workflow, right where you left off. Finally, before moving on, you can also send a test email. Now it's time to get a bit more fancy here, so we're going to go for a split. Omnisend is for e-commerce marketers, so it's optimized for e-commerce. That's why you will find pretty much any browsing, cart, or contact information available to be used as a filter for a split. For example, you can split based on contact properties such as gender. If you are running a recommended products workflow, for a clothing store, you do not want to be sending skirts recommendation for male customers, just like you do not want to be sending male jeans recommendations for female customers. Then you can also split by message behavior. For example, if you send an email with a discount code, you can additionally send an SMS message to those customers who do not open the email to get them to open it and see the discount and convert. And then finally, you can split by trigger events. And the available options are going to be based on the trigger that you have previously selected for the entire workflow. Since we're going for an abandoned cart sequence, we can either split by the product abandoned or by the cart value. And I'm going to divide customers based on whether their cart value was under or over $50. The reason we do this is because for customers whose cart values were over $50, we want to incentivize them more by sending them an additional discount code because we can afford to do that for abandoned carts of larger values. We're going to add another delay for another 24 to 72 hours. Once again, we do not want to be annoying to our customers. We want our brand to represent subtlety and professionalism. But of course, you can absolutely adjust this delay time based on your marketing strategy and on your business. And then we're going to add another split, which I mentioned earlier, based on message behavior, based on whether the contact has opened or has not opened the email. And for those contacts who have not opened the email with the incentive that we sent them, we're going to send them an additional SMS message prompting them to open the email, see the incentive, and convert. Finally, don't forget to add another delay. Now let's go back to the original split based on card sum. And here's what we're going to do for the customers whose card sum is less than $50. I would like to experiment and find out the most optimal way of getting these abandoned cards customers to recover their cards and convert. So I'm going to go for an A-B test. Here you can select the percentage of the split, which in most cases is going to be 50-50. And then after some time, once you look at the statistics of how well the alternatives are performing, you can either pick path A or path B. And the workflow is going to stick to that option for all of the new contact. And with an A-B test, you can compare pretty much everything. You can start with a side-by-side -side of two different emails. And you can see an immediate side-by-side -side of the metrics. So once you have the workflow running, you're going to be able to pretty quickly determine which alternative is outperforming the other. But you can go further than that and you can add additional steps to either one of the paths. For example, you can compare one email to a two email sequence. Or you can compare the sequence to a push notification. There really are no limits to what you can A-B test. And you can even split test more than two different options. You do that by adding another A-B test into one of the paths and then adjusting the ratio of the original A-B test. 
This way you can add as many different options into an A-B test as you want to optimize your workflow for driving the most sales. And that's really all you need to know about automations in OmniSend. Just to recap, make sure to check out the automations library in OmniSend, where you're going to find a lot of the essential workflows for driving sales. Create your own custom workflows by using all of the features that I've demonstrated. And finally, remember that data is key, so don't forget to look at the statistics that will help you adjust your marketing strategy for the most sales. For more information about automation splits and A-B tests, as well as for amazing use cases for increasing your store's revenue, I've included the links to some articles on our OmniSend blog in the description. Those are very interesting reads and definitely worth for you to check out. And on that note, thanks for watching.